Hello, hello. Uh, this is Chandler Poling with White Bear PR, and you are in the Film Music House at the Sundance Film Festival. Today, I have incredible composer Nathan Haltburn here to talk about his score for the Sundance 2021 film in the same breath. Uh, welcome, Nathan. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Great to be here. Yeah, absolutely. Now, um, is this your first Sundance? I feel like you've been to Sundance before. I have been to Sundance before. Um, I've had a number of films that I've uh, scored here, um, uh, premiere at the festival. Um, uh, the previous film that um, I did with the director of this film, uh, Nan Fu Wang, is called uh, One Child Nation, um, and that won the Grand Jury Prize here uh, at Sundance a couple of years back. Yeah. Um, and yeah, had a lot of uh, wonderful films here, anyways. Uh, enjoyed it very much. And it wasn't recently Minding the Gap also at Sundance? Yes, that's correct. That was. Um, I don't know if it was that was the same year or the year before or something like that, but also very recently, also in that same period of time, which was also quite uh, quite lovely. And how do you like the festival? I love the festival. I mean, I I think it's it's been um, you know it's been such an essential part of um, of my work as a composer and my sort of entree into you know working you know pretty much exclusively now and doing sort of film and television scores you know from you know from being a musician um you know my first film score was uh basically my first film score was was at sundance was um uh, an hbo film about the performance artist marina abramovich um and and I think, you know, from there I did, you know, had Rich Hill at Sundance a couple of years later. And, you know, I, in a lot of ways I can really trace back, you know, you know, most of my sort of work and relationship with, you know, with film scores to Sundance. Well, we're here with In the Same Breath this year. Can you just tell us a little bit about the film and uh, what was the direction that you received from uh, the director on, on how to kind of address this kind of sensitive topic of COVID-19? Yeah, um, well, it's it's an incredibly powerful film. I should I should just say, um, and and the filmmaking is 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 really very special, and I I, I think it will be very impactful um, for for folks watching it. You know, as I mentioned, the director Nan Fu uh, Wang, um, I've done several films with, um, a couple of which have been uh, at Sundance, and um, this was a very special and interesting film for a number of reasons. I mean, first of all, you know, she is you know, she is getting access to and showing us both very um, unique images um, and points of view in terms of what was happening and particularly in the early days of the spread of the coronavirus um, in China and in the United States. Um, she has, um, you know, camera people doing discreet work for the film, filming things in China and in Wuhan and in hospitals, putting themselves at great risk to kind of expose some of what was happening. Um, and so that's a very kind of unique thing that people will be um, will be seeing and getting, I think, really tremendous insight into. Um, and then there is also, as always, you know, her very unique perspective as a filmmaker on sort of on what happened with the coronavirus and the interesting and, and very disturbing parallels between um, responses to it and cover up by authorities, both in China and in Wuhan and in the United States. Um, when we first spoke about the film, um, in terms of the score, one thing that we talked about early on um, was the idea that we could use the score here to be particularly expressive about what was happening um, in terms of what's almost an apocalypse now type feeling. I don't mean the film, but the concept um, and, um, and the very deep levels of tragedy. Um, and I think, you know, in some of the previous films um, that we've worked on together, um, some of which I've uh, done with my friend Chris Ruggiero, who's, who's co-composed some of those with me, um, we, because many of those films, there are, they're very often very intimate, they're very first, first person point of view, it's it's non-fu with the camera going around and you have to stick, you know, kind of very closely to that and make sure to not sort of step on anything. Um, and if, while that that subtlety is, you know, is always important and, and is important here too, I think non-fu felt that this was also an opportunity in this film because there's more la layers of distance between the footage and between her as the narrator, although she is still the narrator in her point of view, that 
there were more opportunities to, as I say, to for for the music to more broadly express some of this, you know, apocalyptic feeling and some of this very deep tragedy, um, and to and to really kind of come come to the fore in in, in certain moments and kind of help with some of that, um, help to bring out some of her concepts of what this film is is very much about. Um, so you know, I think one thing one thing that we see in the film is that early on authorities in the United States and in China were in complete denial about what was happening. There was a tremendous amount of cover up um, and lies about what was actually spreading. Um, and one thing that we discussed when we when we were first talking about the film was the idea that the music could express some of this relentlessness of the virus itself, just sort of pummeling and, and plowing forward. Um, and we had a couple of different sort of motifs that express that one you see here early in the film, a kind of fluttering heart bubbling sound that's coming out like the little droplets arising um, uh, into the air. Um, and then also, again, other sort of, um, you know, very dark, relentless, monolithic slabs of very cold and icy music that kind of uh, proceed forward. Um, and, and at the same time, um, there was an opportunity and I think a necessity that we talked about to find moments in the music to, to really express the depth of, of the tragedy that we were seeing. Um, and, you know, we've talked about this, um, you know, in other circumstances in terms of this film, but I, I think that, you know, in some, uh, in some other work, of hers or other films like One Child Nation, um, where you see, um, you know, where you see the dead babies and you see the fetuses. Well, you need to be very subtle around that, around music, because what really, what more can you add around that? I mean, so much of the process of scoring in a film like that is finding ways to sort of be as subtle as possible or find ways to put a pause in the music and leave, leave some space around some of these very intense and graphic things. Um, and there are some very intense and graphic imagery in this film as well. But it's also true that there are sometimes when we see the empty streets in the, you know, in the context of lockdown and coronavirus, and you're just seeing these cityscapes and buildings, and there's some really incredible imagery like that in this film, you're not seeing visually the death and the untold tragedy. You're just seeing buildings. Um, and there is a terrific opportunity for, you know, one of the things that I really love in filmmaking is to, you see this more neutral, uninflected image, and then with the music, you can speak to what is happening behind those closed windows and behind those closed doors, um, you know, which again is unimaginable uh, tragedy uh, and death. Um, and, you know, in some cases, um, the music there can be it can be more emotional and speak to the more personal stories. Um, and in other cases, it can be colder and chillier and speak to the virus and speak to the institutions and the authorities who, you know, who betrayed their, their populations, you know, so grievously. Um, so I think those are two key um, poles in the score. As I say, like, you know, on the one hand, the virus and the institutions and the cityscapes, and this is very cold and icy, but then on the other hand, there is a real intimacy in this story as well. You know, um, Nan Fu, um, both, both remotely in China and then here herself, um, in New York and, and, and in the United States, you know, speaks to the stories of healthcare workers, individual stories, very personal, individual, tragic stories, um, you know, and here, you know, our relationship musically is not cold and apocalyptic and icy, but is, but is really much more personal um, and, you know, is use of more intimate instruments and solo strings and things like that um, to speak to these, you know, really tragic personal stories. Um, and I think it's those two poles um, that, you know, that are what make it such a, a special film um, in many respects. Um, and, you know, the music is very much in dialogue with that. Wow, well, I, I just got chills just thinking about the, your description of the empty streets, but of course the use of music to bring in the, the kind of the sorrow and the emotion of, 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 of what's happening um, 
the film so sounds incredible and it's one of IndieWire's kind of top picks of the of the festival of films are most anticipated to see so that's incredibly uh exciting overall i wanted to know how has covid19 affected you personally and professionally has it uh you know really slowed you down have you experienced any sort of uh tragedy from the virus on your end uh, i would say i've been extreme uh, personally i've been extremely fortunate and extremely blessed you know my family um has been for the most part safe um you know work and you know doing scores and musical stuff has proceeded a pace um, which uh, is good for a number of reasons, but in, including the fact that even working on a film like this, uh, you know, for myself and hopefully for audience who see it was was cathartic in a lot of ways and um, and working on some of the other films that I've been scoring during the kind of during the pandemic period have also been um, have also been quite cathartic. Um, so yeah, I, I've been extremely fortunate. Um, and um, yeah. And I wanted to know this, this film in the same breath doesn't sound like uh, you had to kind of play down the middle. A lot of documentary film scores, you're not supposed to use the music to lead people to believe one thing or the other. You're just supposed to play to what's happening and let the audience decide what they feel about it. But it sounds like in the same breath, you were given kind of the opposite direction that you were supposed to play to the tragedy that was happening or, or the, the scale of, of this virus. In the circumstance where you have to play down the middle, what are some kind of tricks or how, how do you approach that? I imagine it's more difficult to be neutral than it is to play at certain emotions. Well, I, my feeling is that, you know, I mean, it's interesting is, you know, you speak about certainly in, in this film, you know, the idea of sort of being told what to think and propaganda are huge themes in the film and are a lot of what Wen Fu is, is grappling with and exploring in very complex ways. I, I would say that I don't, I, I feel that with the score and I think always, no matter what it is, you know, I'm trying in this film really only to bring up something which is an authentic subtext. So, you know, anything that we're, saying or you know or bringing out i think would be irritating to the audience if it was felt to, to be it's in other words it's not my own commentary it's not it's not the director's commentary we're just sort of bringing out something that's that's authentic there i think really the the only so i don't i and so i think this is just as honest and sort of non-manipulative i would say as any other score that i do um i think that maybe one of the key differences um, is something I think about a lot is more one of overall style and overall affect. So there are a number of films um, in which, and I think this applies both to narrative films and documentary films, in which you, you want to be very delicate about the presence of music and you want to ease in very gently and come out very gently and you don't want to draw any attention to the fact that there is a presence of music and you want to be very careful about breaking that fourth wall. Right. Um, and I think in a lot of verite films that I've uh, that I've scored, um, you know, the recent Netflix film, Father, Soldier, Son, or even a narrative film like The Rider um, or Sundance film like Rich Hill, you know, you're very delicate. You let the verite stuff play out, music eases in and eases out. And you want to be very careful about that. But there are other cases in which you can be upfront about the fact that, like, yes, there is music here and by stating it we are going to invite the audience to reflect a little bit on how you know on how the film is is being used you know in terms of their consciousness um so you know i think it's a question of overall style um and again there while there's a lot of intimacy in this film um there are also things that are um broader and more stylized and outside of a more kind of quiet you know, cinema verite kind of uh, structure. Um, so I think that, um, yeah, that's that's one of the dualities that we kind of explore. You mentioned The Rider, and I know that you've also scored other films like Swallow, um, and you kind of jumping between uh, drama and documentary and whatnot. What is a yeah. what is a genre uh, that you would love to score? What's a like a what's a call that you'd love to receive? Be like, we want you to score this. Like, what would well, you love to do next? 
Yes, well, I, I don't know if this is sort of a cheat on the question, but I, I was very fortunate and this actually just happened, um, was something that I really wanted to do, um, was something that was a, had a bit more um, physicality to it and physical action as part of the drama. And I just scored, um, we just finished a, a film called Catch the Fair One, um, which is a very intense thriller uh, produced by Molly Asher, who produced both uh, The Rider and Swallow, actually. And, um, uh, and it, it stars uh, Kelly Reese, who is a real life uh, Native American uh, female boxer. Um, and it's her in the context of a very dark uh, thriller. Um, which has, you know, tremendous, you know, meaning and depth, but also has aspects of, you know, real physicality and action. And that was something, you know, and real, like, intense action scenes. And that was something that, um, that I had not done before and had been really wanting to do. Um, and uh, that's been a very exciting thing. So that's, that's, that'll be coming very soon. Yeah, excellent. Well, that's exciting. I'm excited to hear that from you because you've got a great kind of diverse musical palette through all your different projects. So this sounds like another element to look forward to in your kind of musical career. Uh, well, thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me about uh, In the Same Breath at Sundance and uh, look forward to all the stuff that's coming up in the future. Thank you so much, Chandler.